So, when you have a very small, close, tight-knit group of friends, you do everything together. I don't need no new friends! You, you see movies, you know, you hang out, you watch wrestling, you might even drive uh, all the way down to Bellevue, Washington to see a comedy show like uh, one Scott Henson and I are doing right now. That's right. And the other thing that you do is you constantly record every conversation you have because you were going to have it anyways, so why not make your other friends listen to it? And plus, we're going to be old and alone one day, and it's going to be nice to have something to listen to. These are my memories. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you um, that are listening to this, you have uh, two members of uh, I Suck Sticks Heart Cinema. Uh, after we did our last episode, which hopefully this goes up before we record another one. Yeah. Well, this, this one's kind of a lame duck episode, because at some point we're probably going to talk about WrestleMania, and it hasn't happened yet, but this is obviously going to be uploaded after WrestleMania happens. So it's like, you know, I listened to another podcast where it was like the they recorded it before the Oscars. Like, it was a movie podcast, and they recorded it before the Oscars, and then it aired after it. Nobody cared. Yeah. So, we recorded a WrestleMania preview show with the two of us and uh, some other guy who's a, kind of a dick. <laughs> and uh, it got a really good response, actually. Yeah, people liked it, and we really enjoyed it. Like, it was fun doing it. Yeah. I found it. I found it really easy to do. We did. I think it was an hour thirty-seven or something, and it yeah. flew by. I think we can talk just as much about wrestling, if not more, than we can about uh, movies and shit talking our friends and celebrities. We have. We have limited uh, fields of interest, but the ones we have, we're very good at. Well, th- that's very true. Um, we're good at like three things, and everything else we're, we're borderline retarded. Now, Scott, yeah. can I rest this here? Um, maybe? I don't know. I. It seems like it'll stay. I think so. I'll try not to make any sudden turns and send our recording device flying. If I'll, uh, I'll do my best job to catch it in the air. All right. Um, so unlike the other podcasts we record, this one will feature limited to no movie talk. And, and it, it's our first in motion recording. In motion, yes, we are We're driving. Currently going 80 miles per hour. In the wonderful state of Washington. I'm actually in a state of denial. <laughs> that you're in Washington? Yes. <laughs> okay, I... Well, I don't know why you would want to be in Washington. There's nothing here. They got good candy. They got sweet sweet drinks. Yeah. Drinks and candy. Drinks and candy. Um, so this one will probably mostly be, if not exclusively be, uh, professional wrestling talk. Did well last time. Do it again. Did well last time. And so without any uh, specific guidelines or... Uh, you know, specific topics, I guess we'll just briefly talk about whatever we feel like or whatever comes up. Um, Didn't you have some bits and pieces? I got some things, but they, right. we, you know, we don't need to stay on any kind of track. We don't have a format. No format. Just There's no the format to deviate from. Free, free flow. Alright. Uh, just to let your dick hang in the wind. Check. Uh, so I know we're, we're a little late on this, but uh, last week, uh, Ric Flair's son, Reed Flair, died. Yep. Uh, unconfirmed drug overdose? I think it's all but confirmed all but at this confirmed. point. I think it was heroin. Which which is, the, to his credit, not the standard wrestler death. Yeah. Standard wrestler death is coke and steroids, or maybe prescription painkillers. Oxycontin. He went straight up black tar heroin. So, for that, we salute you. Well, here's looking at you, kid. It's It was funny. The, the way I... Um, the way I told uh, Reed's death to other people who know, know wrestling to a degree. I was like, okay, so you know Ric Flair, the old person <laughs> who has been in two plane crashes and uh, a month ago um, flew to Japan for a wrestling match, uh, developed a terrible blood clot, and then in- instead of receiving hospital treatment in Japan, flew home to North Carolina, which is about the worst thing you could ever do with a blood clot, <laughs> and didn't die. And then a couple weeks later, oh, his son died. God, I bet that Chris Candido wishes he was Ric Flair right now. For real? Jesus. I went there. And actually, the interesting thing is, um, Flair in Japan, the, the 
the match he was going to have, he couldn't have because of the blood clot, and Reed Flair filled in for him. And that, yeah, that, gotta get your son some work. So, to be fair, pretty high profile final match for Reed. He, he, like, that was easily the biggest thing he ever did in his career. It, it was more of a high profile match than either Eddie Guerrero or Chris Benoit's last matches. Guerrero which we was. Recently talked about. Guerrero was Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy. And Benoit was a three way with Elijah Burke and someone? We're, yeah, we're pretty sure it was. Maybe Matt Stryker or Marcus Corvon, I think. Because it was definitely an ECW, and that was yeah. the only guys that they had working there at the time. Fuck. Maybe Kevin Thorne, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah. And I remember it. I mean, you know, it could have been a singles with Burke because... Um, Maybe. Because what was supposed... Because the, pa- the, the pay-per-view the next week, um, I think Night of Champions 07, I guess, was supposed to be... Benoit Punk in the finals of a tournament for the ECW title. So I'm thinking his last match would have been the semifinals, right. which, I, which I think could have been Burke. I, yeah, I, I guess that. Yeah. All, all I remember from that match is definitely some some sloppy working from Elijah and some really angry chops and punches from Benoit. Yeah. Because he, he knew it was ECW and no one was watching, so he could just do whatever he wanted to try to uh, hurt people. That too, and like, Elijah Burke had been in developmental for... 14 years? God, I couldn't even tell you. But Remember when he was Sylvester Turkai's manager? <laughs> Sylvester Turkai. What's going on? <laughs> the Predator. Oh, God, yeah. He he uh, got some shitty gigs. But, I mean, he was he was in developmental for a long time, was he not? Yes, he was. Like, it was several years. Yeah. And finally gets his big, big push up. And, well, didn't, didn't last for him long. Yeah. And then he went to TNA, and it didn't last very long because now he's uh, he's gone to become an actor. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's not even doing raps anymore. Yeah. Which is probably best for him because for the last six months he was employed with TNA, he wasn't on TV. He was doing their typical uh, six months on, six months yeah. off. Like he was the he was guys he was quote unquote were. cycled out at the time. Yeah. Um, so the reason they brought up Rick, uh, Reed Flair's death. Um, it's because when I found out about it, and I saw a bunch of posts on Facebook, and people were, I guess, sad about it. I mean, it obviously sucks when anybody dies, but, like, to be honest, why would you really care if, I mean, you don't, you've never seen Reed Flair wrestle, like, yeah. anywhere, right? Um, but the reason that I, or the, when I saw all these people that were feeling bad for him, my response was, okay, your dad is arguably the greatest professional wrestler of all time. Yeah, I'm sure, certainly there's lots of opinions, there, but yeah, oh yeah. there's probably a lot of people if who you, would say Ric Flair yeah, is the best wrestler if, of all and, time. And, and I feel like it's a lot of, like, uh, the the Triple H generation of guys will say yeah. that he's the greatest wrestler of sure. all time. Triple H would say that. Yeah, absolutely. People who are slightly older than us. Yeah. Um, but, the, I mean, your dad is widely considered the best, if not all top of, three yeah. By most people, almost everybody. Yeah. All, of, all of my uncle's friends who like wrestling think Ric Flair is the best. Yeah. So, your dad is the greatest. I do not understand why you would try and do the exact same thing that your dad did, knowing full-heartedly that you are not going to be your father. Yeah, it's, it's such an exercise in futility. Like, why would you... Because you know you're inviting the comparison. Like, how can you think you're not... And, and why would you do it? Because the comparison's always going to be negative. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing, you're in a different era. You know, yeah. Flair was great in the, the territorial era. And then the WCW era. Yeah. And then later in his career, he had success in the E. Right? Yeah. So, you're, you're coming up in a generation where, uh, what is there, arguably four big North American promotions... Sure. Well, depending on your definition of big, there's either one <laughs> or levels, a, or yes. a few. There's levels. Yeah. There's the E. There's TNA. There's Ring of Honor. There's you know you got then PWG, PWG Chikara. Chikara. Yeah. There, there are yeah. levels, but I mean you're not you're not wrestling in a territory where you build yourself up and you got a local fan base and everybody loves you and then you go national like his dad did. Yeah. And I just feel like uh, you look at Wayne Gretzky, greatest hockey player of all time. His son is a first... Again, de- debatably greatest hockey player. I, I, I think you can make a pretty strong case for Owen Nolan. Hey, 
you do not smack Tom I'm Owen not. Owen I love Owen Nola. That's Owen why Nola I said that. I think he's the greatest. Fucking man. I think he's the greatest hockey player of all time. Anyway, back to Gretzky. Um, Gretzky's son is a first baseman in the Chicago Cubs organization. Yeah. Um, as far as I understand, Michael Jordan's son uh, played is dead. <laughs> 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 played high school. I'm so sorry. Played high school and college football. Um, and then, like, well, there are a few exceptions in football, but I know, like, uh, I'm pretty sure that Jerry Rice's sons don't play football. Yeah. I think I remember seeing an interview where he said they don't play football. But, like, Joe Montana's son plays football. Uh, Steve Young's son plays football. Joe Montana or Joe Montana? Joe Montana. Okay. He's the best receiver I've seen since Joe Montana. <laughs> I said Montana. <laughs> Even so, that doesn't make sense. But anyways, <laughs> so at least they they realize like, why put that added pressure on yourself to try and achieve what your dad did when you could be the a better at something else something without else. the pressure. Nobody's gonna go watch Trevor Gretzky play baseball and you know rag on him for uh, he, uh, that that single he could have legged out for a double. He's lazy like his father was. <laughs> yeah, he's not as good at baseball as his dad wasn't hockey like it's a lot more of a stretch to make the comparison like the, I and certainly I understand why people get into the same business because you you have a you have a huge in right like your dad was Ric Flair you pretty much get you get to wrestle yeah you can do there's there's very limited options when you don't have a yeah. father that's Ric Flair but when your dad is Ric Flair yeah he could probably get you a job anywhere, anywhere. like I'm kind of surprised that he wasn't doing developmental in the heat. yeah so like if you're if you're hard up for work, I can see doing it. But if you have a choice with what to do with your life, I don't know why you'd fucking do it. Yeah. Do you remember when he was like ten and he wrestled Vince Russo in WCW? <laughs> yep. Like that was crazy. Yeah. And I remember like from what I heard from like other people talking about it, like on on uh, other wrestling related podcasts, um, that. Rick was like super proud of Reed, like uh-huh. would not stop talking about him. Just like because he was like, I guess like was he? A, he was a high school wrestler, and right? he wasn't a college yeah. wrestler. I don't think high school. I think. Yeah, he was like, but he was like a top. Like, yeah, he was a very good high school, school wrestler. wrestler. And I remember yeah. they were building that up, like in WCW when he wrestled at ten, yeah. and he was like, you know, like a state champion at the age of like ten or eleven. Yeah, like and so. He was very proud of him, and then of course, like the I think the like the, the saddest part of it is the fact that Rick was the one that found him dead. I don't know if I knew that. Yeah, the, he, he apparently found him in the hotel room dead. Fuck. So that's that's got to be pretty good. That is devastating, and th- and that's the same week that because um, Rick was going to be on Raw because they had a um, that was the week they had the uh, panel of legends uh, hosting the debate between Rock and Cena. It was uh, it was uh, Foley, Dusty Rhodes, Jerry Lawler, uh, someone else, and Booker T. And Booker T. And what was a uh, Booker T. was filling in for Flair because Flair got there. Apparently, looked like shit. They sent him home for medical reasons. Turns out he had another blood clot. Ugh. Um. So so they they flew, they flew him back to North Carolina. Which again, this one's not as stupid because apparently. Blood clots on planes are only bad for flights over four hours, apparently. And this was like one hour or something. So it was okay to fly him back. But but he did survive the one from Japan back. So. Yeah, so at this point, he's pretty much indestructible anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, like, what do we... Like, sent home from Raw, like, another blood clot in his leg, and then finds his son dead. Like, that fucking sucks. Like, I, I don't care if... Like, I don't care if Ric Flair is your enemy for whatever reason. Like, you don't want to wish that on a guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't... I, like, that's... I mean, that does seem like it happens a lot, though. I mean, yeah. wasn't it Chavo was the one that found Eddie? I believe so. Like, that's got to be pretty tough. I, I yeah. couldn't even imagine finding any one of your friends or family members dead. Like, But I, I guess in wrestling, it does happen quite often. It does I mean, happen. How many wrestlers die every year? A lot. A lot. And, I mean, most of them are guys that had past glory and then kind of have a downfall and then... They are wrestling fucking indies in Florida, and they die in a hotel room. Yeah. By that, I meant test. That was my reference. <laughs> test was your reference. My reference element? point was test. Yeah, that's fair. Andrew the Punisher Martin. That was short-lived. Uh, like one pay-per-view? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, maybe a, a, a more of an up, up uh, heart. Uh, up heart. That, no, not a term. Not a term. <laughs> a more upbeat topic is that... 
we are currently on the way down to Bellevue, Washington yep. to watch a comedian stand on stage and tell jokes at our faces. Yes. Uh, Greg Proops. Goes by the name of Greg Proops. You probably know him from the British or American uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Which he loathes. Which, yeah, which is hilarious because it's basically the only thing he's known for and all he does in his stand-up is talk shit about it. Because he, like most people, finds improv to be stupid. I think his major problem with it was the fact that it was on network TV, so they couldn't do anything. That's the thing. Because everything had to be PG for yeah. TV. But the funny thing is, he did say that, because uh, uh, I listened to him on the Nerdist podcast, and he had said that towards the end of the American run... Uh-huh. They were essentially trying to see how much they could get away with without getting in trouble. I like that. Like, you could kind of see that in some of the later stuff. Like, yeah. him and Ryan Stiles and Colin Lockery were definitely trying to see how much, like, how how inappropriate they would go. Let's, could see, go what, let's see what they'll allow before, on yeah, TV. Yeah, before they said anything to them. Yeah. Um, so we will be doing that, and then on the way, then later tonight, we'll be driving back home yep. to Scott's home, yep. which it will be the very first time I am in his house. Drew and I have known each other since, I believe, Halloween. <laughs> 2004. Yes. It is now April 2013. <laughs> Drew has never been to my house. Although, the thing can be said for a, a lot of... Drew, Drew would definitely be my best friend that's never been to my house, but I've, I definitely had other friends that for a long time never went to my house because I am, my house is never the central location anywhere. I am as far south and west as you can get in Canada. Not even in our city. Yeah. In Canada. Any more and you hit water... And then you're in Japan. And then <laughs> <laughs> Directly in Japan. Yes, I am, next, there is I am the, next door to Japan. There is four to five feet of water, and then Japan. Yeah. It is, yeah. It has always been my burden that I am I am always the one driving to someone's house for hangouts. They, they hang out. I am never the central location. We all live more way more east than you so. yeah there's always there's always someone who is more central than which me. is funny because i feel like my house is the furthest east yours isn't that central and yet we end up there all the mine time mine is oh yeah it's always my house or sometimes kelly's house but usually my house yeah so when we get to casa de henson yeah house henson house henson sorry house henson we will be watching uh new japan's eye pay-per-view yeah on their annual wrestlemania weekend show Technically same day, but for us, day before. Yeah, because it, it's their Sunday. Uh, it's their Sunday afternoon. Yeah. We get at the midnight between Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Which is fine by me, but I hope I don't fall asleep. I think just stay caffeinated, then you should be okay. I'll be fine. Um, anyways, this is... I, I generally am not a man who enjoys the Jap Graps. Because you're a dirty racist. Well, the thing is, I am a dirty racist. <laughs> but also... Uh, I feel like I'm not as into wrestling as I used to be. If we were doing this, like, five years ago, then I think I could get really into it. But I just feel like uh, it's a it's a, something I'm just not as into as I used to be. However, New Japan must have somebody inside my brain. <laughs> because for a company who I've probably seen, uh, I don't know, four pay-per-views of ever or like and like very limited matches yeah the one thing they needed to do to suck me in to get Drew's business to get me to go to Scott's house and watch uh, big old Japs beat the shit out of each other is they need to find a lower mid-card wrestler from the mid-2000s from the mid-2000s of the only company I watched at the time and bring him over to Japan and put him in a semi-main event match. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, he's talking about, like, you know, maybe a, uh, a, a Mark Jindrak, a Sean O'Hare. Yeah. Maybe a, uh... A Chuck Palumbo. Palumbo. That's impressive. That's impressive. Right there. Right. Did, uh, did, mark, mark that time down, listeners. That is a go-to, uh... We said Chuck Palumbo at the same time. Chuck Palumbo. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, maybe, maybe even like, uh, you know, Rene Dupree, maybe, perhaps. Sure. Well, you're on the right train, train of thought. Yes, you are. Because he used to be a tag team partner of Rene Dupree, and that is Rob Conway. Yeah. The con man himself. Rob Conway, NWA world champion, Rob Conway. 
You heard me right, folks. Rob Conway, NWA Heavyweight Champion in 2013. Yeah. Briscoe, Funk, Flair, Steamboat, Race. Conway. Conway. <laughs> a, man, a man who once had a, a uh, Sunday Night Heat feud with Eugene. This is news to me, but I love it. I, I, I did my Rob Conway research. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I read up on it. I read up all about the split of La Resistance. I read up about the uh, the Randy Newman music, the child molester mustache, the uh, the attempted Buff Bagwell gimmick as they were... <laughs> See, I, 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 I shit you not, the, the thing I read was that when he was pitched the when they were pitching the idea of pushing him as a singles wrestler, yeah. the original storyline they had was it was him and uh, Grogne because Dupuis was Dupuis, Dupree was on uh, SmackDown with Kenzo. Oh they, oh, they split them right, right, right. right? Okay, yeah. So he was with Kenzo and they kept Which sidebar, Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki. <laughs> they were in the best match Scott Knight ever watched were, in the history of wrestling. Be, best is not the right superlative. Uh, longest, longest is <laughs> most ridiculous. The show was Armageddon 2004? Four. Four, yeah. Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki, uh, okay. were they the champions? They were the champions. Yeah, which, if you had asked me for a million dollars, if Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki had been tag team champions, probably would have told you no. Uh, defending against Rob Van Dam and Rey Mysterio Jr., Team 420. Team 420. Because they have four legs and they the add combined, up no, to the combined shoe size, size is 20. 20. That's right. Yep, you heard it. <laughs> um, had the longest match I've ever seen. <laughs> and if you look it up, you'll see that it was 1926 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was the longest match. Yeah. It went two Earth years <laughs> if it went a day. <laughs> we, we ate an entire meal, had four to five conversations. <laughs> Pages were falling off the calendar. <laughs> And this match was still going I, on. Like, there were... I'm going to go conservative and say 12 hot tags in this match. Yeah. No, there was an endless loop of hot tags. You, you would have thought that the DVD was skipping. That it was going <laughs> back five minutes, and then it would play again. They go back five minutes, and nope. Yeah. You were wrong. There was an endless supply of hot tags, <laughs> and heel cutoffs, yeah. and using the ropes... Just continuous. It's actually it's actually an amazing match and, and worth watching once. Never again, because you'll be totally mad after you watch it. Yeah. But seriously, if you can track it down, watch it once. And see see if we're just being assholes about it. But we both saw it and independently had the same like opinion. That how long was that? Scott, I somehow doubt that we were being assholes about it. I don't think so. It's, I'm pretty pretty sure we're justified. It's ready to bring the Suzuki. Yeah. Anyway, back to your Conway research. So uh, when they split them up, uh, the original story was that they, two of them uh, were going to try and one-up one another in, like, singles competition, right? So, okay. like, Grania would have a match, and Conway would come out and stand at the top of the ramp and watch him. Yeah. And then sort of, like, you know, when, when he would get, like, you know, cut off, then Conway would be like, Oh, bro, I knew you suck. Oh, you can't <laughs> do this. And then, you know, vice versa. Uh, so Conway got some some decent wins over some higher mid-card guys, and Grognier did the job to everybody, uh-huh. and then uh, Grognier got hurt. Was, was Grognier the one that was super young? Yeah. He was like 19? Yeah, and remember yeah. they brought him in as a referee, and he screwed right. over, uh, um, crap, what was the storyline that he came in? I have no idea. But it, it was like, you, you'd remember if you saw, read the, or if I could remember. I'm, I'm sure, yeah. Like, it was something like... Vince or Shane brought him in as their special guest referee to screw over Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Anyways, he so um, Grunny, I can't remember if he got hurt or he got busted for doing the juice. Something. But it was one of the two. Anyways. They weren't wellnessing that much, so he probably just got hurt. Okay, yeah. So anyways, Conway, this, this, is, anyway, this is what I read on the internet. I don't know how true it is because it was the internet. Well, if it's on the internet, it's true. If it was on Wikipedia, it's true. Sure. Because you can't edit that shit. No. It's real. Um, so they brought him into creative, and they they asked him if he had any ideas, and his idea was that he was going to be, like, a super macho, uh, like, really tanned, in shape, flashy guy, heel, um, 
you know, who was like really full of himself and arrogant, and essentially somebody in uh, the conversation said, oh, so you want to be Buff Bagwell. Because Buff Bagwell was so successful. <laughs> and... Especially in WWE, <laughs> Buff Bagwell was so successful. Oh god, his one title match. It's, it's, fu- it's funny, the like, the super macho gimmick is, um, is only like a hair away from gay. <laughs> it seems like it should be the opposite of gay, but it's not. It's really, really close yeah. to gay. But, at the same time, that mustache he grew pushed him even closer to gay. Yes. That split that hair down the middle. <laughs> yeah. It's probably splitting something else down the middle. <laughs> but anyway, so that was the gimmick that he chose because he wanted to be essentially Buff Bagwell. Yeah. Uh, if you could be anyone, oh yeah. why wouldn't you choose if Buff If you Bagwell? have the choice of, you know, hey, I, you know, I really want to be like a, an unstoppable, uh, like powerhouse heel, just dirty tactics, or, you know, I want to be super baby face who... You know, people really want to, I really want them to try and get behind me and get me excited. No, I want to be a mediocre t- <laughs> t- t- like guy who had limited success in another company and had the dumbest storylines. Here, now, Buff Bagwell's a great guy for this. We often have the conversation <laughs> of, you know exactly what I'm going to say. We often have the conversation of, uh, in regards to, uh, like, a mediocre to bad workers, what was their best match? What was Buff Bagwell's best match ever? Scott, he didn't he didn't have a good match ever. <laughs> like I, I couldn't tell you any like, any match he had. Honest to God. Like I'll, the only match I, the only two matches I remember from Buff Bagwell. Judy Bagwell and Paul. Judy Bagwell had like, breaking his neck. Yeah, those and, are the only things I remember. From and, him. and the Booker T debacle on Raw. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those are the only three matches I remember of him. Yeah. Like I know he had tons of. I know that they had uh, him and was it him and Shane Douglas were a tag team towards the end of WCW. Because um, they were part maybe? of maybe they were part of the yeah they were new blood I guess yeah new blood and then because you because you know in <laughs> two thousand Buff Bagwell who had been there since nineteen ninety two three yeah was totally new blood well and you know I guess yeah thirty six year old Buff Bagwell and also and also year old Shane Douglas. I was gonna say also Shane Douglas new blood <laughs> wasn't he he was a WCW tag champion in nineteen ninety I believe. So, I, and again, New Blood was all... It was basically all relative to Hulk Hogan. Yes. If you were newer than Hogan, you were New Blood. <laughs> and then there was the Millionaire's Club. Yeah. Which was just all the old guys. Here would be another interesting thing for all the ones that are still alive. How many of the Millionaire's Club are still millionaires? Probably uh, not that many. Uh, fuck. <laughs> so it was Hogan, probably not. Because it's not, not anymore. Because he's almost broke. Because of his divorce. Flair, absolutely not. Flair, no. Nope, same thing. Four divorces. Yeah. S- <laughs> Sting. If he manages money, Sting though, seems like he's got a good head on his shoulder. So and, Sting is probably still technically a millionaire. Uh, Lex Luger. Nope. No not way a chance. in hell. Not a fucking no chance. No way in hell. Um, who else is that? Goldberg. Goldberg probably is. Well, Goldberg's probably pretty smart with his money yeah. too. And he did have all those sweet. Uh, uh, what was that motorcycle? Or no, that like <laughs> cross country racing show that he hosted. Yeah, uh, like off road dirt bike thingy. Or whatever whatever that was. Was uh, was DDP in it? Uh, I don't remember if DDP was or not. Regardless, he I would say he is a man. Uh, he's probably the richest. Probably out of the all best of all. right now. Yeah. Um, unless Sting really manages money well, yeah. because Sting was probably the highest paid guy for WWE other than, other than Nash Hogan. Hall and Hogan. Yeah. And he, yeah, and steady employment since '87. Yeah. So yeah, and he like, was Sting. I'm sure Sting's fine. And just imagine how much money they made off of merchandise for him. Oh yeah. Because next to the NWO, he was like yeah, their guy. Right? Like, yeah, Crow gimmick Sting merch would have sold. Yeah, I'm so crazy. I had I had a Sting shirt. Ah, I still have a Sting shirt. It barely fits me. <laughs> but yeah, I I gotta imagine that he's still got some uh, some cash banked. But yeah, the rest of those guys. Nope. Uh, now, not, not to go backwards in time here, but uh, question: Who dies first, Flair or Scott Hall? Because I think they're both immortal. 
<laughs> like they are, they are both highlights. But can we add a third to that? Jake Roberts. Oh, no, Jake's gonna live longer now because DDP's been working with him. It is, have some, you seen him recently? Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. He looks incredible. But <laughs> he could probably make another run. I swear to God. But maybe here's the thing. Maybe what? Maybe all the bullshit oh. Jake was doing is what was keeping him alive. And now that he's healthy, he's just gonna drop so dead. So DDP is slowly killing Jake Roberts. Yeah. Little, n- not on purpose. He hmm. thinks he's helping. Yeah. And isn't someone... Aren't they doing, like, a restore Scott Hall thing, too? Yeah. yeah is, is, is that DDP as well, or yeah, someone see, else? Yeah, I think it's... Actually, I don't remember if I heard anybody's name attached to it. Okay. I just heard that they were doing They're it. They're doing it, It would yeah. make sense if it was DDP. Yeah. God, I, I feel so bad for Scott Hall. Like, <laughs> just watching his, his evolution from, like, you know, sp- Space Coyote. Whatever the fuck is... <laughs> what was his name? Let's go with Space Coyote. <laughs> <laughs> from... From um, AWA mustache porn star man, yeah, to like Razor Ramon, who my favorite wrestler probably could have like uh, I don't I don't want to say that if he had stayed in the E that he would have been like a huge star. If but he, he if was he had, getting there, if he had stayed and not turned into a total fuck up, yeah. he definitely would have won the world title at some point. Yeah, he was getting there. He was, and that's the thing is like Scott Hall, seriously, great worker. Yes. Like, incredible work. Great wrestler. One of the, probably one of the most underrated workers of all time. Super underrated. Probably one of the best workers, uh, six foot five and over ever. Is yeah. What, whatever. He's around that height, right? He's six five, six six, something yeah. like that. But yeah, he's, he's great. God, he's so good. I mean, like, he was in great shape. Yep. I mean, he could work any kind of match you wanted him to work. Yep. But he just had to be a fucking complete lunatic. Yep. And ruin his life. I think, see, honestly, uh, uh Scott Hall, Better worker than Kevin Nash. Oh, no question. And like Ke- Kevin Nash, how many times was he heavyweight champion? Kevin Nash For is both, a both show, both companies. Kevin Nash is a bad wrestler. Yeah, like st- I didn't, I didn't think Nash was terrible when he was Diesel and he was getting his title pushes. Uh-huh. But as soon as he went to WCW, he was shit. Yeah. Like, shit. Yeah, okay, maybe you're part of the only storyline that they had going for like three years. Like he was involved in every single thing that happened in that company. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're a good worker. Nope. Like, yeah. It, just, uh, but yeah, I, I I think realistically Flair should die first because he's older. He is the oldest. But unfortunately, I think Scott Hall will probably be the one that goes. Yeah. But like that's the thing though is like I I can imagine Flair being like Harley Race because Harley Race has got to be pushing right. He's got to be pretty old. Age wise. Yeah. Um, Harley would be. Uh, is he older than Flair? Yeah, he's older than Flair. 70? Yeah, like, he, he's getting up there, and I guess, uh, like... Because, okay, so Flair, so Starcade 83 was 30 years ago, so if Race was... I think he was old then, though, wasn't he? He was oldish then, so if he was 40, if he was 40, then he's 70 now. If he was older than that, he's 70-something now. Yeah. So, Flair, I can see him being one of those older guys who gets old and kind of gets out because he can't really, you know, like, Harley Race can't really stand up anymore, can he? Like, he's yeah. kind of sitting down and doesn't he's, really he's talk. A, he's, and, a, he's a sitter. Yeah, like, he's a, he's a uh, getting to be a senile old coot. <laughs> but I can see Flair being that, but at the same time, I can also see Flair being a guy who you think is going to live until he's 100 and then doesn't. Yeah. I mean, he's only 63. Three? Yeah, so he, he's he's still relatively young in the spectrum of humans. Yeah, but in the not spectrum, as much in wrestlers. In the spectrum of wrestlers, he's thirty years past his like past <laughs> his living date. Yeah, so the life expectancy of a wrestler in twenty thirteen is the life expectancy of a human in the seventeen fifties. <laughs> <laughs> if you told me in two thousand, if you gave me a list of wrestlers that Ric Flair would outlive, yeah, I would be in shock. It's an impressive some list. Of those names. Yeah, some of those guys that died in their their early 30s yeah and Ric Flair is 63 yeah incredible Mm -hmm. but that's the shitty part of the business is you know guys make terrible decisions yeah and uh I'm I'm saddened that a lot of the wrestlers that I loved as a kid are all dead now yeah I would say like honestly like I loved Boss Man he's dead yeah Mr. Perfect yeah British Bulldog yeah all those guys Owen Hart love those guys yeah Owen Hart loved them Teddy Guerrero (laughs) Well, it was, and he was it, later, it, later in my, in my childhood. Yeah. But yes, absolutely. Like all those guys that like I used to go to the video store and rent the yeah. same five or six VHS tapes that they had, yep. and just constantly watch like SummerSlam '92, Survivor Series '91, like just constantly watch those. And now all those people are dead. 
Like, especially too, because, like, Mr. Perfect was, like, the, he was my go-to guy. Him and Macho Man were my two go-tos. Yep. And, good good go-tos, by the and way. And both, both of them. God. Dead. And then I have, to, I have to put up with... Now, look, I don't have anything against him, but I have to put up with recurring appearances of Hacksaw Jim Duggan, <laughs> who, when I was a kid, could not stand. <laughs> Hated him. Not, be, not necessarily because he's a bad worker. It's because you're anti-American. No, it's because he's just... I, I, when you're a kid, you're like, Oh, fucking America, it's so dumb. <laughs> like, why do they love America so much? America, America, America. But I just... You sound like a fucking terrorist, by the way. <laughs> and, and I'm in their country. Yeah, I you shouldn't hope, be saying oh that. Oh, God, I hope that we don't get to the border. Hold on, hold on. I am, I am <laughs> going... Listen, I am going to commit a felony. A felony on the air right now, okay? Is everyone listening? I'm going to kill the president. That's a felony. What I just did. I really hope that when we get to the border, they don't let us back into the country, and then they pull us aside and like, oh, what's on this phone? Oh, what's on this whole thing? And we are now in jail. Oh my god. You know what? That's actually, that would be a pretty good story. <laughs> the, bo- the border guard that is listening to this right now is laughing his ass off at it's, the fact that we're going to jail. It's almost worth it for the story. I also like it that the border guard listened to like half an hour <laughs> to get to this. Well, he had to make sure that there wasn't anything on it. That's, you know, that's a that's a diligent border guard. I can't be mad at that guy. And now we're part of their Christmas their Christmas party every year. <laughs> hey, you guys want to listen to those two assholes talk about wrestling and then go to jail? I always want to be a story at someone's Christmas party. <laughs> Oh, That's man. the goal. <laughs> um, so again, we got. I we went back in time, so I'm gonna go That's back. Right. I'm gonna go back in time again to the uh, the New Japan Eye Pay Per View. Now, okay, Scott. I growing up, I watched tons of WWF. Yeah. Uh, I never missed like a Nitro. Yeah. Uh, and watched most pay per views because I had an illegal black box. Very good. Um, as soon as ECW got on TN and and then. Became whatever it came after TNN, and then became whatever it became after that. Yeah, I watched every single Friday night. I watched that, uh, but I was not. I did not. I did not have much knowledge of Japan outside of Japanese wrestlers who wrestled in WCW. Right. So uh, I knew Chono. Yeah. Which was the only at the time was kind of like the only one I knew. Yeah. Uh, and like Takamishinoku. Sure. And like okay, all of Kaiyan Tai. Kaiyan Tai. You got um, as far as I've Jushin Liger. Liger. You got you got uh, you got some Yuji Nagata for a Yuji little Nagata, while. Yuji Nagata. Absolutely. Uh, you I actually some, really liked Yuji Nagata when I was a kid. He's on the pay per view and is going to have a really good match actually. Good. Yeah. I, I. You know who else I was really excited was on the pay per view, even though he looks like death, Masato Tanaka. Yep. Oh god. I, seriously, Masato Tanaka was one of my favorite he, guys. He's, he's, he's going to be in a good match too. Even though he looks like he's got a vagina for a neck. Eh, a little bit. He's not, he's not a young man. No, but, but he lost a lot of weight. He did well. He, he, he's Mas, not. Masato Tanaka is awesome because he um, he was uh, he was zero one regular and uh, would have been probably in the 07, 08 range. He got hurt and then while he was and, and he was always like a main eventer in uh, in zero one like multi time like heavyweight champion and stuff. He got, and when he got hurt, he. Um, while he was rehabbing, he decided to lose, like, 30, 40 pounds, and came back and challenged for and won the junior heavyweight title. Which, which is awesome. Which is awesome. That is so awesome. I love moving down a weight class. Yeah. Yeah. In that's, wrestling. That's, that's, at, at that age, too. Yeah, he, he was, was a young man. Yeah. He was, um, he would have been late 30s. Yeah. Which is, if I got, so many, I have so many fond memories of Tanaka. I love like, Tanaka. Like, friggin' Taz. Mike Awesome. Yeah. Like, all those matches he everything, had. Everything so with Mike good. Awesome, yeah. Even that one at One Night Stand against Mike Awesome. It was great. Really, was ridiculously, like, so good. It might have been, and that might have been one of their craziest matches. They just went, they didn't give a fuck. They're like, <laughs> we have, you know, we, we have one shot. To, yeah. Neither of us are ever going to be on pay-per-view again. Yeah. So, do you remember, let's oh, do it. Like, when, when Mike Awesome did, like, he threw him through the table. Yeah. And then did the springboard over the top rope and just landed on him. And that was the finish. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> didn't even care. Just like, bleh. Yeah. Looks so good. Insane. Oh, that that honestly, like, was that the best match of that card? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Because I remember the Benoit uh, Guerrero match. Sucked. Was horrible. What happened, but, I mean, guys? That, that was at the end of like that was when Benoit started to go crazy. I think Benoit started to go crazy, and Guerrero would be alive for 
five more months after Yeah, that. like, that match was terrible. And I remember them, like, stiffing each other and kind of getting, like... It was frustrated with it one another. It was weird. Yeah, like... And I remember that match was supposed to be Benoit Malenko. Yes. And yes. then something happened with Malenko. Uh, he's old. I think they just decided he wasn't going to do it. He's <laughs> old and probably couldn't do 90% of the I things. I bet he could have. You know what? He's probably fine. Oh, he's a little fat now, Malen- but... Malenko was wrestling regularly up to 01. Um, so he'd have been... Was it 01? Yeah. Could have been a little later than that, couldn't it? 02. Maybe 02. Yeah. Because he did like, have that run as uh, light heavyweight champion, and then... That, the Yeah, that was 2000. And then he had... And I'm pretty sure he was on Mania 01 doing something. Maybe. With Lita. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was stupid. And, yeah, so, yeah, he probably stopped wrestling in 02. So he wouldn't wouldn't have been a lot more than three years removed from wrestling regular. Yeah, so I'm yeah. sure he could have done something, but I don't know what happened. And, and he never really and, beat up his body too much, did he? He just no, he retired because he just didn't want to wrestle anymore. But yeah, he was he was getting on. He's like, ah, uh, I'm probably good. Huh. Yeah, but a- anyway, so I'm super excited to see Masato Tanaka. For, uh, for the record, second best match on that show: Chris Jericho, Lance Storm. Yes. Oh God, that was good. Because Jericho gets it. He wore his fucking old gear, did old moves, did a goddamn tiger suplex. They called him Lionheart. And you know who didn't get it on that fucking show? Rey Mysterio Jr. wore his WWE gear uh, and did a 619 and everyone rightfully booed. Yeah, you know who else was really terrible in that? Psychosis. Yes. Yuck. You yeah. know what? I will say that Rey and Sabu at... Better. Nah, uh, One Night Stand It was two, much better. Yeah. Much better. Yeah, someone someone good. gave someone gave Ray the memo wear old gear. Yeah, good for Sabu to actually have like a good E match because yeah. they had essentially done like fucking nothing with them. And that actually got him a job for like a year. Yeah, yeah. But I remember like I have very brief memories of Sabu in WWE. I have him getting eliminated in the Royal Rumble by um, the Great Khali. No, Big Show. Big Show. Where he chokes on him off the apron through a table, and yes. Sabu took a mean bump and then laid on the floor like. Definitely yeah. did not like that bump. No. And the second best memory... No, sorry. That was the second best memory. The best memory I have... I hope it's, I hope it's mine. Sabu from ECW would be myself, Kelly Summers, and Scott Henson... Yes. ...at a party. I believe on Justin's show as well. Was it? Yeah, oh, yeah, and Justin. Yeah, Justin yeah. was there too. And we were watching on, like, the smallest TV <laughs> you've ever seen in my friend's kitchen... Yeah. ...ECW one night, and it was Sabu RVD and Sabu... Ladder, ladder match. Ladder match. And Sabu, instead of setting up a chair, <laughs> jumping chair to top rope... For the triple jump. Triple, triple jump. He sets up the ladder on its side, closed, and tries to jump off the ladder to the top rope, and the ladder just rolls over on its side, yeah. and he lands butt first on the ladder, <laughs> and gets super mad, gets up, and leg drops the ladder. Yeah. Like Now, if you're imagining this and haven't, haven't seen it, you're like, well, they can't be describing that right, because a ladder, a closed ladder on its side... The slightest touch would knock it over. Yes, it would! <laughs> and it did. <laughs> but see, that was that was what made Sabu Sabu. Yes. Was like mid-match calling a spot, like, fuck it, let's try it. Oh fuck, it didn't work, oh. and I hurt myself. <laughs> Such is life. So many times do I remember Bill Alfonso throwing tape in the ring so Sabu <laughs> could tape up his knee mid-match. Yeah. Or super super glue his shoulder. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. He was crazy. After his entire arm was torn open oh, on barbed wire. God. Jesus Christ. You know, he did have some pretty good matches in uh, in TNA, too, with Abyss. Yeah, he did. That's what, he, he, did a, he did a barbed wire with Abyss, didn't he? Yeah, they did yeah. that one where it was the boards, and he put the Abyss between it, and then he did the triple <laughs> jump onto... Yep. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, they did some fun stuff. Yeah. And now Abyss is doing silly things. But they're awesome. They are really good. <laughs> They are really good. I, don't, I, I would never have told you that Abyss was the best actor in TNA, but yeah. he is. See, that's the thing is, I I feel he's a good actor. Uh, the only thing I don't like is how, I guess they're trying to distance him from wrestling exactly like Abyss, but I I think it's silly that they make him just completely like a coward who doesn't even know <laughs> how to throw a punch when he's that big. Yeah, like but, most, but, they, but they are at, like they're doing like he's he's probably the only character in wrestling with character development. Because like he he started as a guy like who didn't know how to wrestle. Then they 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 did a series of promos where they sent him to OVW and trained him. So now he knows basics and he's going to keep like progressing like a rookie, which is it's it's very interesting. It's yeah, I think it's very cool what they're doing. I, I did see um, a couple weeks ago 
because uh, unfortunately for me, here's the thing, I don't like TNA that much. Sorry, Impact Wrestling. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I like some of the things that... Is it, is it actually called Impact Wrestling? Mm, I don't... Like, did that name change ever, like, uh, officially... I think that their show is called Impact Wrestling. I don't yeah. know that the company is called Impact Wrestling. And if, in fact, the company is called that, is their TV show called Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling? It is. Absolutely. Okay. That, there's no way it can't be called that. <laughs> um, I, I think Bully Ray... Great heel worker. Yeah, like he's he's a really good champion. Awesome he's, promo, he's, and he is doing the best wrestling of yeah, his life. Yeah, he's, right he's now. really developed himself quite well. Like yeah. he's done really well. I'm, the the two people going into 2013, the two people who I said need to win the world title for the first time are Bully Ray and Chris Daniels. Yes, I'm surprised Chris Daniels hasn't won it yet. I, he's, he's been they, in the company since day one. But he, he's had so many off times. Like they fired yeah. him like three times, and then they always give him like. Uh, tag teams, tag teams or, or like ran- feud with AJ, random feud with AJ Styles. Like, they, yeah, it's but true. if if he stays, if he stays there consistently and keeps doing what he's doing, he will win the world title. Uh, oh, absolutely. And the, the thing with them is, I feel they have they have one of the best main eventers in in Bully Ray. They have one of the best tag teams in Daniels and Kazarian. You betcha. Like, not necessarily like they're good wrestler wrestling wise, but promos and awesome. acting and gimmick. Awesome. Everything great, yes, just awesome. Everything, um, and then, uh, but then at the same time, I feel like they have the worst storyline <laughs> in the last like five years of wrestling. Ace this Ace of an Eight thing is just trash. It's garbage. <laughs> All it is is they tried to recycle NWO, yeah. but they instead of NWO, they accidentally recycled uh, Disciples of Apocalypse. <laughs> Because all of the guys is, in Aces and Eights have the wrestling ability of all the guys in DOA. Now, who are we talking about? Are we talking about Skull? Skull. Eight Ball? Chains? And Crush. And Crush. Now, Brian Adams, I respect you, but that storyline sucked. <laughs> like, they really buried you. Because you were a better worker than that. Yeah. But... Yeah, you gotta take what you can. Yep. You break up the uh, you break up the nation domination. You give them each their own group. <laughs> what a silly, thing! Silly racist groups. What a thing! 1997. Can we talk about how racist wrestling was in the 90s? <laughs> like you can't just take a guy who's just a random Puerto Rican worker who's never done anything racist like that and then all of a sudden they're like bam you get your own little cartel and you guys all have to be super hardcore Puerto Ricans you gotta wear you have to feud against a group of white bikers and a group of angry black men yeah you gotta wear wife beaters and whatever those pants are <laughs> the, 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 the uh I'm the, not Puerto Rican so I don't know what those pants the, the are the puff pants yeah so yeah it's uh yeah it was it was weird man yeah <laughs> anyway so Impact's got some good stuff going but at the same time, they are just fucking horrible when it comes to storylines. <laughs> yeah. And they've got that a lot being of- said, they're better than when Rousseau was there. For sure. End of side one. Well, our trip to Walmart has ended. We're back. We are back in the car, continuing our talks about wrestling as we drive down to Bellevue, Washington to see a stand-up comedy show. Um, when we left off, we I was talking about Impact Wrestling uh, and how they do some things good, but a lot of things terrible. Yeah, we left off on Aces and Aids, right? Uh, yeah, we were just like, yeah. Well, we were, we were saying that they have good things, they got some bad things, and I think the worst thing about Aces and Aids is that, like I said, it's a knockoff NWO that turned into DOA. Yeah. Because in the NWO, you had, you know. What six, seven good workers in the group? Nash, Hall, Hogan, Steiner. Mm, that might be it, actually. You may have covered your bases already, and I think two of those might be bad workers. Hogan and Nash. <laughs> Hogan and Nash. Um, but like big names, certainly. Well, I guess at at a point, the giant. Yeah. Um, you know, for a brief period of time, Kurt Henning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had some good but, guys in the group, but not the main guys. Yeah, one important part, lots of main eventers. Yeah. Aces and Eights is uh, full of, well, Bully Ray, great worker, who, who, now. Who, who, before this past pay-per-view, wasn't in it. Yeah. Like, 
So before Bully Ray, who was the first, as far as TNA goes, legit main eventer that's in the group, yeah. it was Devon. You have a uh, Devon. The, here's the thing. I feel like Devon was getting better, and then when they gave him the storyline, he has gotten he got worse, horrible, the, like yeah. worse. So Devon, not really that great of a worker. No, and not a main eventer. By not a main eventer at all. Standard. You have former WWE reject uh, Drew Hankinson. Yeah. Or Festus. Oh, good, or good pull on the real name. I wouldn't really? have got that. Yeah. Or Festus or uh, Luke Gallows. Yep. Now wrestling as... Uh, the fuck's his... Doc! Doc. The director of Chaos. I regrettably think you're correct. I am correct. I Trust me, I watch this shit every week. Okay. So, you got him. You got another former reject in Mike Knox, who I don't know that they have... They just call him Knox, I think. He's just Knox, I believe. He's just Knox. And, uh... By your and Kelly's account, the smelliest wrestler I know, it was me and my friend Clark. Okay. But yes, he is a terrible smelling human being. He looks like he stinks. Here's the thing, too, though. He's skinnier now. Yeah. And he doesn't have the giant, like, long, gross beard. The beard was part so, of what made him look like he stinks. <laughs> maybe he doesn't smell as bad anymore, yeah. but he still probably smells pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, not the worst smelling wrestler I've ever wrestled, because I have wrestled Dan in his old gear. Uh, <laughs> which, it, not to be confused with Dan in real life, the, the Steve Carell movie. movie. With Dan Cook. Was he in that? Oh, yeah, he was his brother. Oh, good stuff. You love your Dan Cook? And by you, doesn't. I mean everyone. <laughs> Dane Cook is the the uh, George Carlin of our generation. Maybe Richard Pryor <laughs> I was, for the Whites. I was I was gonna call him the the Larry the Cable Guy of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> the lower middle class Larry the Cable Guy. Um. So, and, and speaking of those two, they are both horrible. Yeah. They are nothing spectacular. I feel like the internet liked Mike Knox at the end of his, like his ECW run. I guess. He's a big dude, and they gave him a pretty decent push. I remember him doing some pretty sweet, um, big, huge guy uh, running crossbodies. Yeah, you're definitely a fan of his big, fat man crossbodies. Yeah, those are sweet. I remember them, too, because they used to, like, just crush guys. Yeah. Right? Which, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, And... Yeah, Luke Gallows, like, nothing special. No. Nah. I never, I, I can't remember any matches specifically that he had that were good. He, um, I remember one, uh, during the Punk and Straight Edge guys against Ray feud, uh, Ray and Gallows had a good match on Raw or SmackDown, mm. and that was about it. Yeah, I don't remember that. I'm sure I watched it, but definitely don't remember it. Um, and then, uh, you have two... Uh, going back to something we had previously talked about, uh, next generation wrestlers, uh, one being <laughs> Garrett Bischoff, yep, and the other one being <sighs> Wes Briscoe, who is uh, the son of the shittier Briscoe. <laughs> yeah, not even the good Briscoe, but that that Briscoe was still like a competent wrestler. Yeah. And the brother of a really competent wrestler yeah. in Jack Briscoe. Yeah. Um, West didn't get a lot of the good wrestling genes. Not at all. He West, got, I don't even know if <laughs> I don't even know if Wes has a nice pair of jeans. <laughs> Probably not. The th- so here's the thing with the way that they they run this group with those two. Garrett started as a referee. He obviously is the son of a non wrestler. Yeah. So great start. Great start. Uh, then they trained him to be a wrestler. Yeah. Which, I guess if you want to put a guy in there, you should train him. You should train him. I think we can agree. It's a good idea to train before you wrestle on TV. Yeah. So they, they put him in there, and at least with him, they realize that he's not a good wrestler, so they don't let him wrestle very often. Yeah. Whereas Wes Briscoe... Seems to wrestle every week. Seems to wrestle every week and is fucking horrible. He's bad at wrestling. Do you know, the, the prime example of this is if you can get a hold of Lockdown, the last Lockdown they did, just watch Wes Briscoe versus Kurt Angle and you will see how horrible he is. Because not only... And how, and how badly Kurt Angle wants to get a good matchup. Yeah. Kurt tries his hardest. 
because Kurt is a competitor and he wants to do well. Yeah. But not only Wes doesn't post. No. He doesn't protect himself. He doesn't protect his opponent. It's like he wasn't quite trained. Like he can't even take suplexes. Like watch, Kurt gives him several suplexes, like ver- different variations of suplexes, regular belly to backs, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. He can't take them. It's like Kurt deadlifts him and then he just accepts <laughs> dropping. Yeah. Like he doesn't tuck his neck. He doesn't like you know flat back it. He just lands whoever he lands. It's it's, it's, prob- it's probably got an elbow down or something. It's almost like the like he's working a gimmick unintentionally, <laughs> where his gimmick is that he doesn't know how to bump. He's just a fighter, and then, yeah. and then he's gotten in there with a wrestler who's throwing him around. But like, let, let us be cl- let us be clear. That's not his gimmick. No, he is a hundred percent trained. He just looks like he that. came out of FCW. Yeah. And they released him because he was shit. Yeah, which, think about that. How bad do you have to be to have the last name Briscoe and get released from WWE Developmental? You have to be pretty fucking terrible. Yeah. Like, you have to be the worst human being on the face of the planet. <laughs> I think we're not exaggerating when we say that Wes Briscoe is the worst human being on the yes. face of the planet. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then you have the mo- like just the random... We have nothing for him to do, so Mr. Anderson, you're in the group because we yeah. don't have a storyline for you. Ken, you're, you have been mailing it in for two years. <laughs> yeah, let's do something. You're, you're not over with the fans. You have. You're not a good face. You've stopped coloring your hair. You've stopped shaving. You've stopped working out. Yeah, you are RVD. <laughs> so he, they just threw him in there. They didn't care. They just wanted to. They like, they like. Keep him, on, keep him on TV, yeah. I guess. We're paying him. We should do something. Yeah. Um, and then they threw in, uh, you know, they got to have their heel commentator, so they threw in Taz. Now, I thought the point of that was to have, like, have Taz be their manager and cut promos and shit for them. It doesn't seem to be the way that's going down. No. Here, and the, the way that I look at it is, okay, so, in my opinion, the greatest commentator of all time, or at least my favorite commentator of all time, was Bobby the Brain Heenan. Heenan's great. Because Bobby the Brain played a heel all the way through. Yeah. He never he never tried to cover up a botched move. He never tried to get the fans to think about this guy being a good guy. He was the he was he, the he was the heel color he commentator. He was a hundred percent bad guy needs to win. I'm cheering for the bad guy. Yes. He can't do anything wrong. This the, good guy's a loser. The good guy's lo- a loser. He's cheating. Like, anything he could to get you to, like, obviously, to get you to want to cheer for the face. Yeah, to get but, you rooting against Heenan and the bad exactly. guy. Exactly. Like, and and it, it didn't matter if it was a guy that Heenan was associated with. As long as he was an established heel, Bobby the Brain was, was cheering him on. He wanted him to win. And, and that was what made Bobby the Brain so appealing and such a great announcer. Yeah. But then you have... Taz, and on the same side when Michael Cole was doing it, who, they're heels to further their storyline, but when there's something going on that doesn't involve their storyline... They're play-by-play. They're play-by-play. They're just doing their job. Yeah. They, they break away from the fact that last match, you were threatening to beat up whatever that, like, that other commentator guy that TNA has, the fat dude. I don't know his name. Pat yet. something. Yeah. But anyways, the, the new guy that they brought in to try and train to be a commentator. Yeah. So there's an ace and an eight, eights matches match where Taz is, you know, if you don't shut your mouth, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna beat you down like all the rest of. Didn't my he threaten to murder him? Yeah, like Taz has said some horrible things to this guy, <laughs> right? Like he really shits all over him. Yeah, right? I'm pretty sure he threatened to put him in a body bag. Yeah, like Taz, like when when he's doing it, is like shit talking this guy. But then the next match, when it has nothing to do with aces and eights, it's just like you know, it's just Taz doing commentary. A random woman's match or whatever. Terrible. He's doing commentary. He's yeah. interacting with uh, Mike Tanay and the other guy. Yeah. Like he's just he's just doing his job. So. So like to me, you're, that's that's just doing a shit job and because you're not even staying in character. Yeah, it's like really kayfabe breaking. Yeah, and the same thing with Michael Cole. When Michael Cole was doing the Jerry Lawler story, like, I didn't know there could be anything worse than Michael Cole face commentator. Yeah, there there is. Yeah. It's called Michael Cole heel commentator. Absolutely. He 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 was sitting next to Jerry Lawler the entire time. Yeah. Or and sometimes Josh Matthews. Yeah. And he would be. You know, putting down Jerry Lawler, calling him an old man. Yeah. You know, telling him that he can't get it done anymore. And then the next match, he'd be, you know, like sometimes he would almost be 
a face commentator yeah. while he was a heel. No, like, he terrible. did such a bad job of commentating on matches where he's supposed to be, uh, you know, against Jerry Lawler and against uh, everything that the good guys stand for. Yeah. But then, at the same time, he's, you know, bad guy pulls a dirty tactic and he goes, oh, well, that's, you can't do that. That's a, that's a dirty tactic. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, just not a good job. So, they, they threw Taz in to do that. And then, of course, they need to get, like, a uh, an office guy in their group. And the office guy that they chose... Clarence Mason? Yes, Clarence Mason, uh, the former manager of Nation of Domination. Yeah. Um, whenever there is a team beatdown, whenever Ace and Eights gets in the ring and they are laying the boots to whoever's in the ring, I swear, every time I watch, he is the first guy in, he is the first guy to lay the boots, and he does the most... He does all of the beatdowns. He's getting guys to hold guys back so he can punch them. Uh, D'Lo Brown. You're looking at the real deal now. Real deal now. <laughs> you can't see visual shed shakes, but I'm doing it. He's doing it. But D'Lo is always the first one in. He's the first one to beat down somebody. D'Lo means like, business. He really does mean business. This is the most fun D'Lo's had in a while. This is the most fun he's had since he had to wear that chest protector for like <laughs> three years. And he was a pimp in training. Trivia question. Who... Injured him that gave him the chest protector. Uh, ooh, ah. yeah, it's a, it's a good trivia question. Who is he feuding with at the time? That is the question. Was it, it, was, it wasn't really someone he was feuding with. Was it Ken Shamrock? You are super close. Steve Blackman. Not as close as Ken Shamrock. Dan Severn. Yes. And how did he do it? Just belly to bellies? Uh, no, his his, uh, his weird like side bow and arrow oh, submission. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, it, yeah. like ripped his pecker or something. Yeah, right. That was it. God, and then they acted like that thing was made of steel. Yeah, for years. <laughs> like the frog splash, and the guy was like dead, unconscious. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that extra half inch of padding. Oh, that cushiony blow. It's gonna be out for weeks. I have a concussion. Oh man, so D'Lo probably the most entertaining part outside of Bully Ray in that group. And also possibly the highest profile name. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I don't know. Devon and Baba. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. D'Lo's D- next. D'Lo had a lot of success, though. He, and he was around for a while. He's bigger time. than Knox, Bischoff, Briscoe, Gallows. Yeah, Gallows. he's bigger. Yeah. Kennedy or Anderson. Fuck it. Yeah, whatever. fuck Anderson. Uh, like, yeah, he's... And, like, he, Intercontinental Champion, European Champion. Yep. Like, can only assume Tag Team Champion. Uh, yeah. Probably. I think, although I don't know who he would have teamed with, because... Mark Henry? No, Mark Henry didn't have that. No, I don't think he ever had it with Henry, and I'm pretty sure Lowdown never had it. Oh, Lowdown. And D'Lo might not have had the tag. He's definitely had multiple IC and Well, he had IC Euro. and Euro at the same time. At the same time, yeah. Yeah. See, like, he, he, he was pretty over, but then again, the Dudleys... Held the tag team. At least are a pretty major tag a team. Lot. Yeah. So. So I'll, I'll give them building over D'Lo, but not D'Lo is definitely the number next three. One. Yeah. 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 Um, so t- fucking, they just do some garbage shit over there. <laughs> like they, I you know I I want to give them props for trying, but at the same time they are not trying very hard. Like they want to be competition. Yeah. And the E does need competitions to, to some extent. Yeah, it's it's always good to have competition. But, like, I feel like they are just WCW if WCW took a sabbatical for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they wanted to take a break, and they're like, yeah, hey, you know what, let's just get back into it. And came back with less money. L- less, yeah, way less money, less prestige. Yeah. Like, you know, the thing is, um, they, they come back with a bunch of no-names... Like, a bunch of indie guys who have had a small fan base going in. Some of them have done really well for themselves. It's also amazing, in ten years plus, how few stars TNA has actually made. That's, yeah, I look, it's amazing. We think about it, their first, like, what, five years? They did rely heavily on, like, guys from outside. Like, all other... DDP, like, people who Booker made, T, Christian. People who made their names elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, they... they like, the only stars you can say they made really, like AJ, uh, AJ, and AJ, uh, are Storm and Root stars? If they are, TNA made them. They, they, they're stars in TNA. Yeah. If they were to go to the E, I don't feel like anybody would give yeah. a fuck. But is because that because they are both very generic wrestlers? Yeah. But is that is that it? Uh, you know what? For the first few years, Monty Brown. 
Yes, yeah. Money yeah, Brown okay. was huge. Yeah, definitely. And then, Money Brown up to 05 or whatever, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. Was big, Abyss was pretty big, but I don't... Yeah, you can say Abyss, too. But, but like, like, Daniels, maybe... But Daniels was kind of a thing before... Yeah, that's true. Before I mean, TNA. There were sporadic guys who yeah. had, like, a brief period of I, like, time. I, I won't say AJ, AJ Styles was much of anything before TNA. TNA no, definitely no. made him, and they did a good job with yeah. him. But um, in over 10 years to have made, like, we're having trouble finding an amount of stars we can count on one hand. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's not good. I mean, the thing, too, is, like, even if you look now, like, uh, Bully Ray, Jeff, Je- Hardy, Jeff Hardy, Austin uh, Aries, Austin Aries, Samoa Joe, all Sting, Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle, Anderson, for the fuck of it. <laughs> yeah, for the fuck of it. Like, these are all, <laughs> all from somewhere rejects else. Rejects of somewhere else. Yeah. Although I don't want to call Sting or Angle rejects. No. Sting, they, Sting just didn't want to go to the E because he didn't approve of anything yeah. that Vince was doing at the time. And Angle lost his mind. And Kurt Angle is a incomplete, insane person. Professional crazy man. In professional, like, lunatic. <laughs> um, but they, they try really hard to be competition. Yeah. But the, I, they just don't... They don't have... The, the writing or the... I don't want to say that they don't have the right people in charge, but they don't have the right people in charge. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not as bad as the Vince Russo years, yeah. where he was running... Because he was running TNA for a couple years, wasn't he? Quite, well, he was the head booker for a long time, yeah. actually. So... You know, Way longer than it should have been. It's not the Russo years. Uh, Bischoff's not in charge as much anymore, is he? Not so much. Hogan still has a lot of say. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously they're going to let Hogan do whatever. He's fucking Hulk Hogan, right? Yeah. Um, I, just, I just feel like... Uh, like It's the same thing as... Um, they've always they've always had this conversation. I've heard it said lots of times on lots of these DVDs and stuff. Is that like the reason WCW failed is because they didn't have a Vince McMahon. And I feel like the same thing with TNA is they don't have a Vince McMahon. You yeah. don't have one person overse- overseeing everything. Now, I'm not saying Vince has the right answers to everything all the time, because clearly Vince yeah. doesn't have any idea of what he's doing anymore. Yeah, but no, Vince is also a crazy person yeah, like, and a complete child. Yo, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I like the story about him sneezing and being a man because he couldn't control it. Yeah. And, like, that, I feel like because there isn't one overseeing body that's saying yes and no to everything... Right? Yeah. Or the fact that they don't really realize what kind of talent they have or is yeah. available. And I guess that also goes to the fact that they don't have that big of a budget. You know, yeah. they have a fan base, but it's not a you know, like it's not a, a WWE fan base no. where they can go to any city in, in the North America and for the like, you know, most part world and yeah. and do incredible business or good business. Although yeah. the E can't really come to Vancouver anymore. No, they, they seem to be done with Vancouver. They have progressively gotten smaller and smaller venues every time they've come to Vancouver. They've gone from, uh, well, what's now Rogers Arena. Which seats about... 20,000? Yeah, 20,000 for wrestling. Yeah. To uh, to the Pacific Coliseum, which seats uh, 10 or 12. Yeah. Uh, which, which was 10 or 12 full seating. Yes. And then the, every time that they came after that... The backstage curtain would progressively move forward yeah, a six little feet. closer, and then the Agrodome. And now the Agrodome. Which seats, again, 4,000 full, and they, last time I went there, which was uh, eight years ago, uh, they had half of it blocked off. Yeah, I, I was there three years ago, and they were about just shy of the halfway mark. Yeah, so... So we're, we're talking like 2,000 Maybe 2,000. This is for a house show. I mean, the, yeah. they, they haven't done a Raw here for... Uh, 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. It last, r- last Raw was May 2000. No, uh, they did one after it. that. They, 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 they did, did one. Raw? Remember when Austin was Sheriff Austin and he announced the uh, Elimination Chamber? The very first one? Okay. That was held in Vancouver because I was at that one. Really? And that was uh, because what it was was it was when Nash was around and uh, Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash came out and they sat in the ring on chairs and they said they weren't going to leave until something and then Austin came out and announced the elimination chamber for the fir- very first one okay and then because I remember this was there was uh, there was three matches on that show that I remember one was uh, RVD Jericho which was really good then there was Ric Flair and Goldberg and Goldberg got booed out of the fucking building <laughs> and then the third one was a Shane McMahon Kane no holds barred match where Kane uh, lit uh, um, 
battery in Shane McMahon's balls. Ah, I do remember the battery to the balls. And that um, was in Vancouver, and that was at... So that, was, um, that was a row in Vancouver. That was at the Pacific Coliseum. So okay. that was like 2003. That had been... Yeah, that yeah, was like early 2003. Like, it was, bef- it was after Mania. Yeah, cause because Gold- Goldberg debuted No, Elimination Chamber Mania. was after, like, the first pay-per-view after Mania? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Goldberg debuted in 2002, right? Wait, let me get this right. No, Goldberg debuted in 03. So yeah. it was... And then Elimination Chamber must have been... No, because I, I, thought, I thought Elimination Chamber was... First, first Chamber was Survivor Series 02. Okay, so it must have been the mid, the next the end, one. end of. It yeah. might have been SummerSlam 03? Maybe. Because I, I know that one was a decent elimination chamber. Yeah, I know. I know the the Kane Shane blow off was Survivor. Survivor Series, Series yes. It yeah. Is. Um, I remember that the. Uh, yeah, that that was a pretty decent one, and I remember the the pre pre show match mm-hmm. was uh, Harry Smith. And Teddy Hart. Wow. I also saw Harry Smith on a pre-show in... Oh, we went to SmackDown in Kelowna, BC. And uh, the pre-show was uh, Harry Smith and Buddy Wayne, I believe. Buddy Wayne, uh, Washington dude, very good friends with Brian Alvarez. Hmm. And I believe he's had two open heart surgeries and is doing well considering. Hmm. So good for him. That's good. Um... Harry, Harry must have been pretty young then, Harry too. was quite young, yeah. Like, but, 2003? But I remember, um, I, I have never marked for a sunset flip the way I marked for Harry doing because Harry got air like you mm. wouldn't fucking believe. Yeah. That dude's athletic. So, and speak, speaking of Harry, we will see him on the New thing. Japan pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, I, defending the tag team titles with Lance Hoyt. <laughs> really? I thought it was a singles match. Wasn't he challenging for the, were the junior weight or the something, something? Yes, he is. I'm sorry. He defended the tag titles yesterday. Successfully against against uh, Nakamura, who is challenging for the Intercontinental, and uh, another guy in Nakamura's heel stable, uh, Ishii. Ishii, okay. Tomohiro Ishii. Um, yeah, but Harry's probably what, like an eighty-two? Um, yeah, probably not, and not any older than that. So he would have been twenty, twenty-one, probably. Yeah, he'd have been real, real and early. 20s Teddy hurts then. around that time too, right? He's probably like in yeah. eighty-four. Yeah, because Teddy's around 30 now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that was the last draw they had here. But, so, I mean, TNA has done fine over the last few pay-per-views that they've gone outside of... Well, I know they did fine in San Antonio, or at least they claim they did fine in San Antonio. Yeah. And then they did Chicago. They did two live impacts from Chicago. Yeah. And then their next one is in Boston. Mm-hmm. So... They they they're they're starting to travel more, which hopefully will will help them. But at the same time, like I they I just feel like they're not going to go anywhere with the people in charge that they have and the f- like talent that they have. Um, and like the fact too, like I mean, AJ Styles has been around now since day one. Yep, hasn't really changed up his repertoire. He's like thirty six now, somewhere in there. Like yeah. he he's getting older and like kind of getting. He's not fat, but he's, like, thicker. Like, the, he, he's the, got, like, a barrel chest. Yeah, the thickness is almost part of his current gimmick, though, because he's, like, he stopped cutting his hair. Yeah, and he grew and a beard. Like, yeah, and he stopped I mean, shaving. He just so, turned heel, didn't he? he not really. Well, he, like, he beat up James Storm, or... Yeah, he's just kind of grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a sourpuss? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a weird thing going on right now. Well, um... So, with, with this talk of... TNA and their attempts, and then yeah. you know WrestleMania is tomorrow, and WrestleMania is uh, the the granddaddy of them all. <laughs> In fact, I got asked by one of my my um, my res- my friends who hasn't watched wrestling a whole lot in the last 10 years but like still knows what's going on kind Ca- of casual fan casual fan but not even a casual fan because he doesn't even watch it just he like, just kind of yeah, relies on what I tell him barely wrestling adjacent and he uh, he said like oh well, where's Wrestlemania 30 and I said oh it's in New York as well um, and uh, but it's in Madison Square and he said well what's the what's the tagline for it is it where it all begins again again okay. no 30 is in uh, New Orleans why did I think it was at Madison Square Garden? Because you assumed it was, but it's not. But I thought, didn't they announce it as in... New Orleans. Is it in the dome? Yeah. So it can hold like 90,000 people? A billion people. But it won't. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess then uh, I will be attempting to go to New Orleans next year. Are you going to try to go? Uh, 
my myself and my friend Tristan are going to attempt to go. Oh, yeah. There's okay. no no guarantees that we're going, but we both said uh, we said before WrestleMania 28, we said we should try and go to, to, 30. to 30. So I'm glad you didn't try to go to 29 because it doesn't look that good. No, and I'm sure that next year probably won't be very good either. I don't know. They they've been good on the uh, the multiples of 10, or at least had a chunk of good matches. Because well, like one 10, 20. I don't believe one is a multiple of ten, but that's okay. Zero would be. <laughs> I was just thinking ten and twenty. Ten and twenty, yeah. They've made an effort on that. That's true, but see, that that's, that's the thing, is that it, tw- 30 is going to be 2014. You're not going to have the same guys that were on tw- 20. Uh, not a lot of them. Right? Like, I can't imagine that, that The Undertaker will wrestle next year. I think he will. Really? But he's so... They said he's so beat up this year. I'm nearly positive he'll wrestle. Oh, God. All right. Well, we'll be disgusted by it, I th- but... I think it might be Taker Cena next year. That would be horrible. It won't be good, but it's interesting because they really want to do someone who, like, oh, can this guy in the streak and Yeah, that's Cena, true. They do love that. Cena makes sense for that. Yeah, well... It will not be a good match, though. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'll go... I'll, I'll try and go regardless, but tickets will be expensive as shit. Yeah. Um, the flight down there, I can't imagine, will be cheap. There's no, yeah, there's probably nothing real cheap to New Orleans. Yeah, so uh, uh, it'll be a long process to go down there. Um, I was yeah. kind of hoping it was New York because it would be easier to get there, but at the and, same time, there'd be you, way less tickets. Yeah, but also you, you at least get to go to New York that way. So with, with WrestleMania tomorrow, with Impact or TNA trying to be a competition, and with... Jap feds get new owners. Yeah. What do you see the future of professional wrestling as it stands right now? Because up up until about a year ago, somebody had asked me, how long do you think wrestling will, end, will go? Just wrestling at all? Uh, like, or like be in the, the state that it is now. And my yeah. response was, like, can I see there being the WWE... At the level it is now, when I'm 40, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, and like the fact that over the last few years, although it seems like it's stronger to now, like the Japanese feds were starting to have some issues. They were, yeah, they were all really hurting. Uh, yeah, up, up until yeah, like two up, years ago. Yeah, right? like around a couple years ago. And uh, Noah is still eating shit right now. New Japan's got a lot better. They're really solid right now financially. Is uh is Hustle still around? No. Um, Hustle Hustle died. Um, Tajiri sort of picked up the pieces and made Smash, and then Smash that. Like he's he's running another like Smash clone now mm. called uh, WNC, I think. And I couldn't tell you for a million bucks what that stands for. But that's Wrestling that's what's up. Nigger fed. Oh, C. <laughs> C for Fed. <laughs> oh, so you said a- oh, I thought I, you said F. It doesn't even rhyme. I said I clearly said W N C. Wrestling nigger cunts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I definitely heard. That. I don't know why I heard F instead of C. I don't know either. I don't know why I said the N word twice. Oh, and we are. I'm just making a turn onto Aurora Avenue in Seattle, about to pass Beth's Cafe, where we could stop right now and get a 12 egg omelet, but we're not egg because omelet. we're not monsters. We're not Bill but Berry. I have seen Bill Berry do it in this very, that's, this very establishment. That's where we went uh, before we went to uh, Over the Limit, right? Yes, it is. And we saw that guy in the parking lot who asked us if we were if we were coal miners. That was the guy who asked if we were coal miners. And for those of you asking, what the fuck is a coal miner? Those that, those would be Michael Cole fans. When he was when he was when doing, he was doing his, uh, his yeah. as his, his aforementioned bullshit heel shtick. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so, where do you think that it stands? Is it is it healthy? Is it good? Uh, J- How long can it last? Japan's healthier than it was a couple of years ago. So it's. You know, in theory, it won't. Uh, you know, it's it's on a, a small upswing. So, uh, if nothing catastrophic happens, it'll maybe continue up a little bit or stay where it is. Which is, if it stays where it is, it's okay. Um, so I don't think uh, at a point at a point Noah could die. Um, they they've been hurt. They lost their TV deal a couple years ago, um, and they. Uh, 
more so than TNA have not made any new stars in 10 years. Uh, uh, Kobashi, who's their biggest draw, um, hasn't really been able to wrestle since 2008. He's having his actual final match this May, I think, and that'll be his first match in over a year. Um, so he'll be done. Um, a chunk of... He's their Undertaker. He's their Undertaker. A chunk of five wrestlers left the company and went to All Japan as a protest for... Because um, Kobashi was actually technically fired because he was still getting paid like his huge salary and couldn't wrestle. Um, and in protest, uh, five of his like boys um, all quit. Um, which actually strengthened All Japan, which is good for All Japan, but very bad for Noah, especially at this time when they're already hurting. Um, yeah, so Noah... Unless Noah gets some backing, I could see them being gone in a couple of years, maybe. Um, I don't think All Japan and New Japan are going anywhere anytime, unless the new All Japan owner uh, loses his mind and does something crazy, which isn't out of the question because he is crazy. Yeah, I've heard things. Yeah, he like he's getting into like crazy Twitter wars with the New Japan owner. Um, he's made uh, some out some outrageous promises, like they're going to be they're going to be bigger than. New Japan in a year, which is a tall order, especially because New Japan is like continually doing better and better, and All Japan is always well for the last eh, ten years has been well below them and bigger than WWE in three years. I think was the promise, which is another insane statement. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's where that's at <laughs> um, as far as Japanese. And then there's the Japanese Indies. Uh, uh, Dragon Gate has a super solid business model. They're like a bigger version of uh, Chikara or PWG here, where they they don't uh, they basically they don't get too big for their britches. They um, they understand exactly what their market is, what they should do, what buildings they should be running, and they just do that and make money. So they'll keep doing that. And I, th I think Dragon Gate will be around when I'm forty, um, which is in three years. Which is in three years. Um, and, and the other indies, that I, I don't know how they, like, your zero ones and stuff, I, I guess they're doing fine. They've been around for 10 years, so I, I guess they, to a degree, know what they're doing. So they'll, you know, I think most will stick around. I think as far as major feds we've heard of, the, the one in the most danger is Noah, which is too bad because in uh, kind of the 2003 to 2006 range, easily my favorite fed in the world. They were killing it. Now... Back on this side of the water, America. What about uh, the Mexican feds? I uh, I'm not real up on my Mexican feds. Obviously, the two big ones are CMLL and AAA. Um, you know, they've both been around for well, no, CMLL has been around for uh, 80, 80 years, mm -hmm. and AAA for a lot. Also, uh, they're. Yeah, financials, I, I don't know a lot about the financials for either. I don't think either is in danger of going anywhere, let's say that. They still have a pretty successful, like, business. Yeah, they... They, they, prob they probably always will. Yeah, they do. They're not, like, in their heyday in the 90s when they were selling out Arena Mexico once a week, every week, forever, uh, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so they're not like that, but I think they're still okay. Who, who do they have for big stars? Uh, well, they got Mystico 2. Uh, who injures himself every time he wrestles. So he's, Even more so than original Mystico. I was going to say, so he's Mystico. Yeah, I know. He's really following in his footsteps. For sure. I wonder if I've missed my turn yet. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, or, yeah. That, uh, big stars. Um, Vampiro. I don't know about that. Conan. Yeah, I really have... Uh, some of the... I know that some of the Super bigger Gallo. ones... CML seems to be making some decent new stars because um, a lot of the top guys now weren't top guys five years ago. You got, um, uh, well, it's, it's spelled Rush, but I think pronounced Roosh. Um, he's worked in New Japan as well. He's up there. Um, La Sombra, uh, La Mascara, Mascara Dorada. Uh, they're all... Um, Super Cal. <laughs> you are worse at this than I am still clinging to Super Cal being a superstar. He's pretty good. Or was pretty good. I can't say I've seen him in a while, but yeah, Super Killer was good times. Um, yeah, so yeah, they're, they Mexico seems to be actually making some newish stars, so that's a plus. Um, then what about uh, 
L.A. Park. I think he's still doing stuff. Uh, La Parka. He was in some like major feuds a couple years ago because they because they actually did him uh, versus like fake Triple A La Parka. Yeah. They did a big feud there and had like I guess like a match of the year candidate. Um, no, a Mexican match of the year or just wrestling in general? Yeah, wrestling in general. Like any anyone who had seen it. Obviously, not not everyone pays that much attention <laughs> to uh, to Lucha. But uh, those who did, I think, were pretty high on it. Um, yeah, that would have been 09, probably. Yeah. So, uh, as of a couple years ago, Parker was doing big stuff. <laughs> so, now back to America. Now America. America. I jumped the gun when we went to Mexico, but now we're back in America. So, the Indies seem like they're doing pretty good, especially PWG. Goddamn PWG. It is so hot right now. I'm glad we've thrown caution to the wind and flown to their last two shows. Uh, Dan and I went to the uh, DDT4, which is their annual tag tournament in January, which was awesome. And then me, Dan, and Kelly went to uh, their was it All-Star Weekend 9, which was a two-day show uh, just a few weeks ago in March, which was also awesome. And there it's gonna have we're gonna have to do everything we can when the card for the next show comes out which is probably gonna be early may uh to not fly to that show because we're like hey we how much do we hate money (laughs) (laughs) um but we've also said that we're probably gonna go to another show this year and i think drew is gonna be among the people yeah going to that show yeah i'll come yeah, because... Yeah. You guys have hyped it up pretty good from the last two, so... Yeah, they, the shows have been great. And, like, PWG has had nothing but awesome shows since... Well, they, they've been a good... They've been a real good fad always. Like, they don't have a lot of bad shows. But they have been super hot since, like, later uh, 2011. They, like... They can basically do no wrong since then. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad we've got to see a couple things live uh, riding this current wave of awesome shows by then and talk about business models they know exactly what they're doing they run like like less than 12 shows a year probably eight to ten shows a year the same building uh never get never get fancy never never try to expand which which is not to say that it's never good to try to expand because sure sometimes it is but sometimes it can fuck you um but no they know exactly what they're doing they have great dvd sales like uh among the best in north america I think I'm pretty sure they're smoking ROH and DVD sales, actually. Even though ROH is, in theory, the bigger fat, um, so that says something for them. And uh, yeah, the, I, I have <laughs> I really have nothing bad to say about PWG. They know they know so much exactly what they're doing. I need to go so that I can meet my boy Drake Younger. Drake Younger is because he seems like the coolest dude. Super cool dude. I actually have because um, the, the reason Dan was very excited to meet. Uh, Drake is because he heard him on the uh, the Art of Wrestling podcast with Cole Cabana. It, se- it seemed like an awesome dude. I haven't heard that, but I, I just know from talking to other people that he is indeed an awesome dude. Yeah. And I uh, and this was confirmed when we talked to him. And he um, he along with Paul London, who was also awesome. I uh, w- like everyone we talked to was nice. Although that was expected because we only talked to people who we knew would be nice. Whoa, whoa. you didn't talk to Petey Williams again? Didn't talk to Petey Williams again, who we talked to in 2006 at PWG and was a shit. And, and according to Kelly, was like a complete fuckface. Yeah, Petey Williams sucks. Um, but yeah, we only talked to people who we sort of knew were cool anyway. But uh, what I'll say about um, uh, Younger and London... Actually, I, I can't exclude Kevin Steen either. He's also awesome. Um, but uh, Younger and London... Um, I don't know if you can call them celebrities, but you know they're the performers at the show, and everyone's there to see them. So I guess it's same th- same thing with you know, when we see comedians after after their shows. Um, there, most of them are nice, and if you if you say hi, they'll say hi, blah blah blah. But there are some people who actually, and I, I don't think they're faking it, who actually seem excited to see you. I th- I think they're just jazzed that people are there to see them and like genuinely appreciative of it. Sklar and, Brothers. And Sklar Brothers are the. Uh, key example for that as far as stand-up comedy like legitimately like excited thankful appreciative that you were there to see them feel like we could have talked to them for like 45 minutes yes which i look forward to doing when we see them again in july um yeah and, and that's how it was with drake younger and paul london like they like they will initiate the conversation with you they're they're so thankful you came they're super nice they'll talk about whatever you want to they'll yeah like like i said they'll bring up stuff with you that they want to talk about just yeah legit great guys so 
So yeah, yeah. They're, 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 doing, they're doing it right. They're, yeah, they're absolutely doing it right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited slash nervous to see their next card because yeah. I, ho- I hope it, I hope it just looks okay. And we're like, all right, that's a pretty good card. We don't need to go to it. I hope it doesn't look amazing. And then we have to have this crazy internal struggle about, oh, should we go to Do this one go? too? But go? no, I, I'll, I'll say, I'll say it now. On so, so all one hundred and whatever you who listen. Uh, can call me on my shit and, and and don't and when I say when I make a Facebook post or something say hey I'm gonna go to PWG you have to you have to respond to it saying no <laughs> you asshole you've got the last two save a bit of money this year and don't go to every fucking PWG show well I'm not going okay I'm I'm stating I'm not going to the next PWG show it will save us money if we just move to California. If, I wish there was a season ticket sort of situation, <laughs> which also included well, airfare. I wish, too, that it was just so much easier for you to just move from Canada to the to, United States. To a different country, Instead yeah. of having to prove all this bullshit to all of them. Yeah. Because for those of you who don't live in Canada and have never tried to move to the States, yeah. although I've never tried, but I know people who have... You have to, like, so much paperwork. It's a Endless paperwork, because they need... Like, essentially, you cannot move there without already having a job there. Yeah. Like, you have to either, like, if you're if you're working for a company and they transfer you to an American branch, yeah. or, you know, you get uh, a similar job at another co- company. Yeah. But you have to... Like, you have to have a job ready for you to start the moment you get there yeah you have to have paperwork from that company Mm -hmm. then you also have to i'm pretty sure you have to have like a financial record proving that you have a bank account you have you own money yeah you can't just move down here with nothing and just live down here yeah no it's a lot of stuff like you have to really work to get down here yeah like if it was much easier like fuck i just like okay let me let me think about this before i give the answer I like living in Canada. I don't know that I would want to live in America for an extended period of time. Yeah, I think I, I can I live I here for either. a brief period of time. But the thing for me is like there, the 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 hard seller for me is I could never move to a city that isn't on the ocean because I do like living on the coast. Okay. And I could never move to a city. Yeah, no, I I, I couldn't live uh, inland. No. I think there might be, if I went somewhere and really liked the city, there might be an exception to that. But I couldn't see myself living in, like, like uh, Arizona or yeah. or Denver <laughs> or, like, any of those inland ones. Yeah. Um, and, like, the, but the, the main seller for me personally uh-huh. is I couldn't live in a city that didn't have multiple major sports teams. Right? Like, yeah. I, I could never live yeah. in a city that only has, like, a basketball team. Or a baseball team. Yeah. Or a hockey team. Like, I would need to live in a major city that has two or three or four. Could you live in Columbus? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, No, because it's not on the coast. Uh, Okay. Right? The the other reason I said Columbus is because this was literally a... uh, It was a Jeopardy category last night. It was cities with only one major sports team. Columbus has uh, a couple. One. No, they got the Blue Jackets and they got the Columbus crew. What the fuck is the crew? MLS. That's not a major sports team. Oh, they make decent money. Oh, hey, I'm getting text messages on the states. Well, bully for you. Um, they make money. It's, I think... Okay, I, I know. They, they mean the they, major four. They meant big four. The, the big four. Yeah. Um, but so, like, you know, I could live in Los Angeles, although I don't think I would actually want to, but, I mean, they've got four yeah. major sports teams. Um, actually, they got more than four because every sport has two fucking teams. Yeah. Um, Oklahoma City. No, because only have one, and uh, and a even though it's a good team, and a and a blown up federal building. <laughs> no, <laughs> does that count? Yes, they also have an American Hockey League team, but that's not, that's not enough for me to move there. Uh, no. I mean, technically, I guess if I wanted to, I could live in Denver. They have four sports teams, uh-huh. but it's high altitude and it's not on the ocean. But anyways, it would be easier if we could move to the states and in, like L.A. and just live down there and go to every PWG show. That would make life easier. That is an adorable dog. That is a very cute dog crossing in front of us. That is the most adorable dog I've seen today. <laughs> so, PWG's doing good. Yeah. See, I used to be really into Ring of Honor. I used to follow Ring of Honor when they had Aries, Joe, yeah. Nigel McGuinness, all that stuff. Yeah, I, I was super... I, I could tell you, and probably still can, because I have autism, <laughs> uh, the dates... Of uh, every Ring of Honor show, probably 2002 to 2004. 
I was I was that into it. That's good. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think the very one of the very few first uh, shows I ever got you to uh, not illegally make me a copy of. <laughs> I'm hoping I can tell you the date of the show that you're about to say. I'm pretty it sure it was Final Battle 04. Final Battle 04 would be December 26th. Oh, Boxing Day, really? Boxing Day. And the main event was uh, Joe losing the title to Ares yes. after his big long reign. That was the very first one that I ever got you to burn for me, and yeah. that match is awesome. Yes, and also I believe an underachieving uh, Danielson versus Loki match. Yes. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure, is that the one where Danielson stretches him? Uh, probably. And puts his face in his dick? And I believe so. Yes, yeah. yes. That's, well, that's a good match, too. <laughs> And then there's, I'm pretty sure that there is a pretty, there's a pretty decent Nigel match on that too, I think. What does Nigel do? I couldn't tell you off It's a pure wrestling title maybe. Yeah. And it's him versus, you know who I think it is? I think it's him and Jimmy Rave. Yeah, very well could And be. I think it's pretty decent considering how much I hate Considering Jimmy, Jimmy Rave's involved? Jimmy yeah. Rave, not very entertaining. Nope. Um. But did get did get a decent push for a while, so yeah. Guess I can't be super In, inexplicably. Uh, yeah. Um, so Ring of Honor, current Ring of Honor, not so good. I um, I've been saying it for well, I guess right around a year. I'm uh, super glad that Kevin Steen uh, won the ROH title. I don't think anyone deserved it more than him. Uh, very sad that uh, ROH kind of sucks right now yeah. around him. Yeah, they, the thing with them, I find, is that a lot of their big guys, like, their stars left. They, they just don't have the roster they Yeah, like, they, I mean, they don't even have, like, I mean, Daniels doesn't even go there anymore. Nope. I mean, they don't have Aries, they don't have Joe, they don't have, uh, like, Generico. No, just lost Generico. They don't have, uh, like... Hero and Claudio, did you say that? Claudio, yeah. no, they're gone. Like, Danielson, they just don't have... Like the top level indie guys they used to have, the yeah. like really entertaining guys. And now it's just like I, I, I'm sure that I know a bunch of, ro- of guys in the roster, but they're not guys that I really like care about. Yeah. One one thing one thing that could be good about the current situation is that if someone new comes along and is awesome, they're definitely going to get a chance to shine. Uh, which is sort of what's happening with uh, Michael Elgin, who I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of. Um, and he, um, well, I was going to say it's almost a lock that uh, he's going to be the one to beat Steam for the title, except for the fact that Jay Briscoe won it yesterday. I'm sorry, Scott, did you say Jay Briscoe won the world title? Jay Briscoe won the ROH world title on iPay-Per-View yesterday. Mm, okay, I, I'm a big fan of, not the Briscoes, don't put those words in my mouth, because I don't actually enjoy the Briscoes very much. I like the Briscoes. <laughs> Um, I enjoy guys who work hard for a company and are there and they're dedicated because the Briscoes have been there since fucking day one. Yep. Well, Jay has been wrestling for Jay's, the Jay's, whole time. Jay since the first show, yeah. Mark since he was legally old enough. Yeah, but they've been there since the earliest shows. Yeah. And sorry, sorry about this beeping. It's my uh, rear backup. Uh, Don't worry about it. Camera and um, they can't. They can't even hear. Parallel parking. All right, I'm parked, you asshole. It's over. <laughs> Shut the fuck you're up. Not, you're not gonna in a little more. Just oh, saying. Fine. Just saying. Um. There. There. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. So I'm all for guys who have been there for a while. They're dedicated to the company. They work hard. Yeah. Winning the title. But. <laughs> That is the most random person it was to win the title. Pretty <laughs> random. Like, nobody called it. That is, like, so weird. Yeah. I, I would have... If you had said, hey, name five to ten guys... Who might win their ...in the company title. who might win the title. Yeah. I don't even know that I could name ten guys <laughs> in the company. <laughs> Maybe not, yeah. Jay Briscoe would not be on that list. That's interesting. End part two. <laughs> Well, we had five spot for dinner, and, we, and it was wonderful. Are we recording? Sure. Okay, I, I, did, I didn't know if you were just stating obvious things to me. I'm like, I know what we had for dinner, Drew. We just had dinner. Scott, we are currently driving. <laughs> we are in America. America. Land of the free and home of the fat. <laughs> yeah, so we just came from a 
an expectedly delicious dinner at the only restaurant we go to in Seattle. We this is that's the fourth time we go. Third time. Uh, Tornado Alley, Broadway. Broadway. Oh, we had Philly once, didn't we? We did have Philly. And then this. Yeah. So that's a fourth one. The uh, the gimmick with this restaurant is they have like half their menu is like their standard like stock menu, and the other half is a rotating regional menu. Where uh, like this time it was the the Blues Highway, so a bunch of like Mississippi, Tennessee, Louisiana stuff, and all of which was delicious. And I have to change like eight lanes in three seconds here, so give me a second. I am drinking a delicious Golden Bear. Arizona Golden Bear Strawberry Lemonade. It is goddamn delicious. It kind of tastes like freckled lemonade. Yeah. Why aren't we sponsored? I've, I've, we're giving this a, a good plug right now. Said its, said its full name. Spoke highly of it. Well, first of all, Scott, we don't even have a name for what we're calling this. I was going to say, we probably just can't keep calling this Isaac Six Heart Cinema episode whatever if it's... If this is the second consecutive one that hasn't been about cinema. Well, see, the last one was a special edition of Isaac Six Heart Cinema. Yeah. This one, completely irrelevant. Is straight up wrestle talk. Grapple talk. Yeah. Shoots. Yeah. I don't know. We, we need to have a name, and we need to be sponsored by Golden Bears that you can only get in the States. And there, there's a select places in Canada I've seen them, but they're all, they're all important, yes. Oh, pick a pay. Yeah. The, um... There is a small corner store or like smoke shop, like couple building, couple d- 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 down from my store. Yeah. And they sell a few things. They have like vanilla and W. Yeah. They have like the random like cherry coke, vanilla coke. Yeah. They have a few things, not a lot. Yeah, it's always kind of a crapshoot. Uh, so when we stopped recording, we were talking about. I believe I was sucking PWG's dick. No, we were talking about Jay Briscoe winning the ROH. Oh, title. yeah. Still in shock. Yeah, about and that. then off air, you said if if I had asked you to list 10 people who might win the ROH title, he wouldn't have been on that list. I couldn't have even named 10 people. If you could name 10 people, and he wouldn't have currently been in ROH. List. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. Definitely nobody saw it coming. It does not affect my life in any way, <laughs> negative nor positive. Yeah. So we talked about the smaller ones. Uh, we briefly talked about Impact. Do you... you f- how do you... F- Did you just have a panic attack? What's going on? No, sorry. Just uh, There was a little tiny bridge over the, riv- the river there, and it looked like the, wa- the road went into the water. Like, <laughs> there, like There was no connection. Yeah. But it was. There was just okay. a pull-off thing to the side, so you could like... Um, I'm, I'm glad Seattle doesn't have a road that goes directly into the water. I, it would make me like them more. Yeah. Um, so, Impact. Do you agree with me that they have the wrong people in charge and that they it's, yeah, it's, have it's, potential but they're not using it properly? Yeah, you sort of hit it. it basically, it's sort of too many chefs in the kitchen or whatever the correct analogy is. Too many is. chiefs, not enough Indians? Yeah, sure. Well, we like to go racist on these things. And and why not? Yeah, so, yeah I, I think it's... Uh, if they had a strong leader, which they don't, uh, it'd probably help. And just... Yeah, it's just a matter of they need better booking because they probably do have enough talent to have a real good product. Sometimes they even, like... Every now and then, they'll have, like, a really good pay-per-view and, like, sometimes they have a really good impact. So it's not like they can't produce very good wrestling television. It's just often... It's kind of... It's messy. And we are currently driving on my favorite bridge, the floating bridge. That's right, like, we're one foot above sea level. Uh, The floating bridge between Seattle and Bellevue, Washington. It's very cool. It is very awesome. Um, Okay, so now... The E. The E. The E. Which I believe stands for The Entertainment. The Entertainment. Um, So... In its more modern form, it's been around for 30 WrestleManias plus a few years. Yeah. What, what? Now, do you think that Vince becomes too old to run it, or dies, or whatever? Although Vince dying is going to be a lot like Ric Flair dying. 
It's gonna, this, it's gonna take a long time. I imagine Vince is gonna freeze himself at some point. Oh yeah, he's gonna Ted blame himself, 100. percent Yeah. Um. Once he's gone, assuming that Trips, Stephanie take over. Yeah. Probably more Trips, I would assume. Yeah. What happens? Do they uh, last another 30 WrestleManias? Like, can they keep going forever, or is it like a thing where? Trips loses interest, and that's kind of the end of it. Nah, I I think it'll I think it'll be around for another thirty WrestleManias. I think it's it's sort of an institution at this point, and it won't uh, it, it won't unless something catastrophic happens. It's not gonna act like full on disappear anytime in the you know in the near in the near to distant future. So it cannot die. Not re- like it can die at some point. I honestly can't see it dying in. In the next 25 or 30 years, though. Unless there's, like, major world changes or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. But if things stay as they are, yeah, it'll it'll be around for WrestleMania 60, I think. It, it, it's weird to think, like, what wrestling will be like when we are, like, 50. That's the thing. 50. Because, like, look at 30 years ago to now, pretty different. Especially, um, less so to a degree in WWE, because they're always the most, like was common denominator stuff but like in like indies now versus 15 years ago is night and day Mm -hmm. so it's very interesting what it's going to be like what any wrestling in north america or japan is going to be like in 30 years it's going to be vastly different i don't know in what way exactly but Mm -hmm. it'll be interesting well i also kind of feel like trips has his finger on the pulse and knows what the haps is with the business. Yeah. He's not, uh, like, he doesn't have his blinders on, like I feel Vince did for so many years. Yeah. And he's not as horrible a person. Well, you don't know that. Play, you uh, can probably prove play it. Play the odds. You can probably prove it. There aren't a lot of people who are a worse person, so just playing the odds, he's probably better. And, like, I feel like Trips has already, with the position he's given... Yeah. I feel like he's already made strides to change the way the company is. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know that things, like, it's hard to say. Like, I don't know that Punk would would have become Punk. I'm not saying that Triple H is the reason that Punk is Punk. Yeah. But Triple H probably had a say in getting Punk in the company. Yeah. And giving him a shot, right? Like, yeah. I can't. I can't imagine that, like Punk and Danielson and like Claudio and all the guys they have in the developmental, like Hero and and I guess now El Generico and yeah and uh, Tyler Black and uh, friggin' Dean Ambrose would have like yeah um, like their opportunity. I like that I went one one indie name and one e name yeah. instead of calling them both by the same or both. Like, by one or the other. Yeah, I like how you mixed it up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know that those guys would have the opportunities, but then what do you do, right? You can't... Yeah. You can't just push, you know, Batista until he's 50 and Cena until he's 50. And yeah. You do have to bring in younger guys. Yeah, but exactly. I feel like trips could, could help, but at the same time, like, I can't imagine... Well, first of all, I can't imagine that I'm going to be watching wrestling past, like... Well, once I think... I think once I have kids... And I'm married. I don't know that I'll be paying attention to it. I may never do either of those things, so I may still watch wrestling. There you go. But I just don't... I can't imagine for somebody like me who's been watching wrestling since I was four years old, I can't imagine what it'll be like when I'm 50. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't know that I could even comprehend the changes or the development or anything that that they will happen to the business, especially, too, because... I've only known Vince McMahon, right? Vince McMahon, there would be. Yeah. So if he's not in charge, yeah. I couldn't tell you what to expect. Like a lot of times, things will happen, and you or me or Kelly or whoever will be like, "Yeah, oh, that fucking Vince, he's a lunatic." Like this is what <laughs> Vince thinks is works, yeah, and exactly. Like then, then what'll happen if we well, we don't have Vince to blame it on? <laughs> like it'll just be, maybe it'll be more watchable. Yep, could it, be. It'll be more entertaining. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I sent. Uh, I sent the three of our, uh, me, you, and Kelly's star ratings to Dan, and he also gave me his, uh, which I might actually have on my 
phone. And we can throw up there for you. Yeah, they're right there. Okay, so Dan's selections are uh, the eight-person opener, which is tons of funk and the Funkadactyls. <laughs> God damn it. Versus um, Road Scholars and the Bell Twins. Dan gives that one two stars. Uh, he which, doesn't, he didn't, which I believe was more than any of us. Uh, I think that is correct. We were all in the one and change um, range. He did, unfortunately, he didn't pick winners, so... Uh, sorry. Um, Barrett and Miz, which is actually on the pre-show now, yeah. uh, he gave two and one quarter, which I think is less than we... No, about what we No, nah, I, I think I might have given exactly two and a quarter. Yeah. Uh, Jericho and Fandango... Uh, Fandango. Uh, although he spelt... No, fan, no, he spelt it wrong. Really? He spelt it Fandagu. Oh, he just missed, missed an N. Just a typo. Uh, he gave it three and one quarter. Which is a little... I, th I think that's high. I think I gave it three. But everybody's entitled to their own opinion, even if it's standard, it's not right. <laughs> um, then Lesnar Triple H, he gave four and one quarter stars too, which is it's feasible. Yeah, definitely we, feasible. We went lower, ha but... Happened to be higher than us. We were all around three and three quarters. I think because three we, and a half. we expect it to be the same as the first one. Yeah. Unless, like you said, unless they unless, do... Unless they go Broxina. Broxina, on, which... In which case, easy, easy four and a quarter. Easy four and a quarter. Even maybe could even be four and a half. Yep. Um, then he's got like I said, I, I'd give Broxina four and three quarters. Yeah. Um, then he's got Team Helno, and as he put it, Biggie and Ziggy. Yeah. <laughs> Which should actually be their team name because that is awesome. Absolutely. Um, he gives that one three and one quarter. Which uh, I think I think I gave three. You gave three and three quarters. Yeah. Hey man, I'm a fan of the Kane Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And Ziggles, he's good. Yeah. And from what Brian Alvarez has said, uh, Biggie Langston's not bad. So yeah. No, it should be fun. He's what Bobby Lashley should have been. Yeah. Um. Then for Brock Goldberg two. Or Ryback Mark Henry. He gave it one and a half stars, and in the comment next to it, he said, I feel I'm being generous with this. <laughs> so, Dan clearly does not believe <laughs> that Ryback and Mark Henry will be very good. Not, which is not a show stealer. <laughs> nobody expects it to be great. Yeah. Um, the only way that I can see it being awesome <laughs> is if he, well, number one, he's done his finish to Tensai. Yeah. Tensai's a tall dude, he's a fat dude. But he probably weighs more than Mark Henry. Right? Uh, Tensai, I don't think weighs more than Mark no? Henry. Henry's a really solid yeah, dude. Yeah, Mark like, Henry is a big dude. Henry's like 400, Tensai's probably 350. Oh, well, then I guess if he does his finish to uh, Mark Henry, then it's pretty goddamn impressive. Yeah. So Has he done it the big show? don't remember. Seen as F.U. to Big Show. I don't pay that much attention to, like, the yeah. the, the TV stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if it actually did or not. Um, but, I don't know. Yeah, one and a half isn't... is, is generous. Um, but, I mean, th there could be cool things in it. But I, I just feel like it's just gonna be... like, challenge of strength. Yeah. Run into each other. A lot of just beating down on one another. Like, I can't imagine there's going to be anything in that match that I'm going to go, holy crap. Right? Yeah. Like, nothing is going to yeah. shock me about this match. Unless someone, like, deadlifts someone or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, which I can't see that happening. Probably not. Um, then, for the Shield Six Man, he's got three and a half stars. Reasonable. Which is about what we all had. I think I said the same. Um... Then for Taker and Punk, he's got three and three quarter stars. Which is actually a little lower which than Which is us. the lower, lowest one. Yeah. Uh, we all expect Taker and Punk to be the best one, and he expects Lesnar and Triple H to be the best one. Which, again, could easily happen. Which, I see, for me, I would expect Triple H, or Taker and Punk to be one, and Lesnar Trip to be two. Yeah. So it's just a reversal of that. Um... Then for Dario Swagger, he's got two and three quarters. Which is a, which is a little, little higher than yeah, we did. Yeah, a little higher. I, I had it two. Yeah. Only because I don't think either one of them are good in the role they're playing. I said two and something. I don't remember how much. And for the main event, he's got Cena and Rock at three and one half stars. Which, which is about... Right? I think I also said that. we all had. Yeah. So, not bad. 
yeah, pretty close in there. So yeah, so after the fact, we'll and and Dan was asking me like, how are we going to compare it to to Meltzer's ratings? Like, um, which we 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 didn't really go in with the idea of guessing what Meltzer's going to give it. So I think we can only really compare it to our own ratings, right? Like what we predicted versus what we think it ended up being. Yeah, I think that's kind of the easiest way to do it. Yeah. So what we'll also so we'll also each rate them after we see them and see if they basically if the match is over or underachieved in our opinions I think is the way to do it yeah, I can buy yeah. It. and we and we can go f- if if they come out fast enough we can go through Meltzer's rating and see if he agrees with us or if we're a million miles off base yeah which I think that we we were we weren't outrageous on any no. so I can't imagine that we're going to be way below what he predicts unless he thinks that something's better than it was or worse than it yeah. was the, I know he gave he gave Triple H Taker last year the Hell in a Cell more than I would get. I think he gave it four and three quarters, which is a, a good chunk more than I would have given it. That is generous. Because I and what's odd is I think he gave the previous year's Taker Triple H also four and three quarters, and I thought that was much better. That was much better. So other than Triple know. H not knowing how to take a go platter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you can't win them all. You can't win them all. Um. I guess that's uh, the extent of everything we have for this one. I think that's pretty much it. I, I'll tell you, recording a podcast makes a long drive go pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> because we're, we've been near our destination for a while. Probably would have been there if I hadn't missed the exit. But, again, you cannot win them all. <laughs> so, dead air, first of all. Well, I like... We didn't discuss how we were going to end it. We, we're not going to do shitheads, because that's the other one. Do I we guess. just leave it? Do we just cut it off right now? 